A lot of you will just be beginning your playthrough in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can get all of the pseudo legendaries early on in your game. But before we get into today's video, please subscribe to the channel. Remember, you can always unsubscribe later if you want to. Now the first Pokemon we're going to look at is Frigibax. It is the pre-evolution of Baxcalibur, the Ice and Dragon pseudo legendary of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. If we can have a look at its habitat, you can see it is going to predominantly be available at the Glacero Mountains. Now you would assume after just starting the game, you're not going to have access to this area of the map because you are going to need some of the additional ride on tools. And yes, that is true to a certain extent. You are going to find it a lot easier to get up to this area if you beat some of the titans and you have the fly the swim and the climbing mechanics but you can still access this area very early on in your playthrough so i'm going to show you a route from here and methods to make sure that you stay on track to get to this area so you can catch a Frigibax as soon as you start your playthrough. I'm going to take my camera off. I'm going to speed this footage up right here and I'm going to show you an exact route of where to go and what methods I use to make this easier. So the first checkpoint that I'm going to put in is this bridge here just by the West Province area. I'm not going to use anything in game other than Coridon's running ability just to show you that you're going to be able to do this and hopefully this is a nice guide for you to follow at the beginning of your game so you can get this legendary Pokemon. So we've just reached the first checkpoint. This is nice and easy to follow. You literally just follow the path here. What we want to do is mark out our next checkpoint, which is this bridge right here. And then we can set off again and make our way to this next area. This is our next checkpoint and of course, so what we're doing now is this is we've reached our second checkpoint and next checkpoint is gonna be Cascarafa City and once the marker's down there, we can head off again. What we're basically doing is making sure that we can map out a route where there are bridges over any water and there's no mountainous terrain for us to get caught up. Of course, it's worth noting if you are early on in your playthrough, just make sure that you are making a pit stop at all of the Pokemon stops along the way and they'll become fly points later on in your playthrough. So it makes getting around the map a lot easier. What you need to do to make it a checkpoint is just kind of go into the area like that and it will become a checkpoint. In Karaskafa town and the next destination, the exit we want to be going from is over here. So this is where we're marking. It's a very short one, but it just allows us to get to the desert area where we want to be getting to. So uh, we can't, yes, we can take this route down here. I thought it was a bit further along. I think there's two lifts here. One of them is a bit further along, but we'll take the shorter route. This will take us down into the desert because this will allow us to get to the next point that we need to get to. So we can boot up the map once again and take a look at where we want to be going. So we can exit from here. We want to be going through the desert and we want to be getting to this exit point here. So we've reached our next checkpoint here. You want to make sure that you're going through the desert, obviously around this area. You can't jump down and you need to be coming out of this area. Now we are here, we can make our way to our next checkpoint, which is this bridge right here. And we've reached our next checkpoint on the map. So this is great. We're making good progress. We want to make our way over to this bridge now as our next checkpoint. Okay, with the next checkpoint raised, we're going to go ahead to the next place that we want to be making our way to, and that is going to be the town of Medali. It's The next checkpoint saved, we are in Medali. We now want to be making our way over to this area over here. Okay, we've reached our final destination and we are pretty much here. It is going to take you about in real world, about between 15 and 20 minutes, how fast, depending, you can do this, of course. But you should be able to just follow the route Follow the paths the way I've done. There are some tricky spots, but hopefully just if you follow what I've done, you'll be able to get here, no trouble. So you wanna just come straight up this way 
off the path and you will be on Glacado Mountain and this is where you're going to be able to find Regibax and uh, get it for your party to start your playthrough. And you're also going to be able to get like to Titan, to Toddle, uh, the, these Pokemon as well. They're obviously going to be around level 30 uh, up to close to level 40 so it's going to be difficult to catch them but if you've got persistence and you've come all of this way then it's going to be worth a while getting these Pokemon while you can. So, so you want to just explore this area. Uh, Frigibax obviously appears any time of day, uh, whether it's more frequent at night, I don't know. I've had more luck catching it in night time, but I've also had luck catching it in the day. So you can just wander around this area and you will be able to come across it. Is that a shiny Satoddle? I think it is. Nice. One way to get spawns into an area, of course, is just leave the area and then kind of come back to it. And where you roughly think it will spawn, you should just come back to that area. And if you look at your map, you can see the Pokemon that are meant to be on there. And you can kind of just check again. So just returning will respawn the Pokemon and you'll be able to get new spawns and hopefully be able to catch the Pokemon that you're going for. It is another shiny. What is this? What is going on? This is two shinies. I've literally been here like five minutes. That's another shiny bomber snow. And we've got another one that's three for three now. It take a little while for one to appear, but you finally get one there and we are going to be able to encounter one. And there's one just behind it as well. So there's a couple here on the mountain, which is pretty nice. So when you get it, obviously it is going to be a lot higher if you are early game. And then we go critical catcher. Hopefully for you guys getting this, you get a critical catcher as well. So you can add it to your party pretty early on. And uh, that's not a bad hunt at all. We got three shinies when we were looking for this one Frigibax. Ice type and dragon type Pokemon as well. So you can add that to your party. And that is one of the pseudos that you can get very early on in your playthrough. The next one, we're going to do the version exclusives. In Pokemon Violet, you are going to get Big On. Then in Pokemon Scarlet, you're going to get Larvitar, which will lead to Tyranitar. Obviously, they are a version exclusive. So whichever version you've got, you're going to get either one. Now, we are starting off in Mesagoza. And where we need to be going on the map is straight out of here and then down to this little entrance here which will take us up into this area where we'll be able to find both respected Lavatar and the Bagon. And you can see if we look at the Pokedex entries here they aren't just the only areas where they will spawn. They do spawn throughout the different areas that you can see here on the Paldea map especially for Lavatar so you'll be able to get them in a variety of places. This is solely just a guide of how to get it very early on in your playthrough and we can have a look at Bagon as well its habitat probably won't be shown here because it we are in Pokemon Scarlet it would be the same areas pretty much as what Larvitar is showing up as in Pokemon Violet so we want to just be heading out of this east gate here and this will lead us out into the east province area so we get our map open so we'll take this path here and it'll bring us round into this area So just after you get past this Pokemon Center here on the map, what you want to be doing is rather kind of taking this route here, but just come up this little path and then kind of take a segue around here. And this will allow you to get into the area that we'll need to get to, to get down to that area that's going to allow us on to the path. As you can see this opens up now and we'll be able to get into the area where the Lavatar and in Violet the Bagon will be spawning. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to access this area without the jump facility. So it's a little way of getting around to come back on this area and uh, hunt for things in here like Slackoth and other Pokemon that are a bit more rare. And if we open the map, we can have a look at what is spawning here. Nothing at the minute, but you want to be coming into this kind of middle area here. Axew is in this area as well, of course. So this is one of the pseudo legendaries. So you can get all three of the, the pseudos in this area. Obviously only two per game because they are version exclusives. But you can see that we can get the Axew. These are all low level as well. So perfect for adding to your team at this stage of the game. 
and you can get some nice strong dragons. If you didn't decide to go for the, the Fridgy Packs, then Haxu is a nice easy alternative that will eventually get into Haxorus. And the other thing to note as well about Axew and Haxorus, why it might be good for a Pokemon to get early on, Critical Capture, we got it there, is that it has access to False Swipe. So you don't need to find the TM. And it can be something that's quite useful later on in your playthrough when you're trying to catch other Pokemon or at least weaken them down and not knock them out. So if you wander around this area, you'll eventually find the Lavatar. Here we go, is my encounter with it in a previous search for it. So you know it is available in this area. It is appearing at night here, but it can also appear during the day. And some footage from when I was in the area, again, searching on my copy of Violet, looking for Bagon, and there's a couple of Bagons here. You can see this is through the daytime in the area, and the Bagon is another Pokemon that you can get, adding it very early early on you can see the low levels like the axe you're going to be around that 16 level perfect to add to your party at the start of your play so the next pokemon that we're going to look at is going to be Dratini. it is going to be one of the the other pseudo legendaries from generation one we can have a look in our pokedex and see the entry for Dratini here and you can have a look at its habitat it is going to have three main areas where it kind of spawns now two of the areas the upper right hand corner of the map is inaccessible without the mechanics that you're going to get from being the titans and the same for the one down in the lower left hand corner the upper left hand corner though where the lake is is going to be the place where we're going to be able to get to now we've already kind of taken this road when we've got frizzy backs so you can kind of follow the same path that we took there to get to that route and you want to just follow this route down here through the town up around here follow this path to this bridge all the way around until you get up towards the water gym town and from Cascarafa, what you want to do is just take the same route through the desert to this exit point here follow this down to the pokemon center and then take a right towards this bridge right here and as we've gone through this route already when i showed you how to get to frizzy backs we'll pick this video up once we cross this bridge into the lake area you are here and you're going to be in dry teeny territory so when you're down on the waterfront here you want to be looking for the dry teenies and trying to get close enough where you can target them with your left buttons and then try and see yeah that one's close enough you can throw a pokeball at it and when you can obviously if it doesn't lock on it might just be out of it but you can still throw a pokeball if it's close enough on the edge of the water you're going to be able to do it and then try and get it add it to your party the only issue is it is going to be very high level if you manage to catch it you're going to have to have a lot of patience and a bit of luck to catch it but it will not obey you if you've not got the relevant gym badges the thing that you can do is though try and catch two of them and then breed them in your picnic area and then get that level one dry teeny. If you are in the early parts of your playthrough and you want to add it to your party to have a Dragonite come the end game, then that is one way to do it because hatching it from an egg level one, you can then use it to level up through the game as you go through. The other option is just to keep it in your box and then when you've got the respected gym badges, take it out, use it. It's high enough level where you're going to evolve into Dragonair with one level up and then you're only going to be like five levels away from actually getting a Dragonite as well and having that in your team. So it's a nice area to come to. It's accessible. It does take a little bit of time to get here, of course, but it is worth it to get one of these pseudo legendaries in your party. Now the next Pokemon we're going to look at and pseudo legendary is Dino. It evolves into Hydreigon. It is Dark and Dragon. You can see in the description it lives in caves. So it is going to be a big indicator with where we can find it. And if you can see the area, the closest one to Mesoglosa is where we're going to be going and hunting for Dino. As you can see, we are on the East Gate and we're going to make our first marker. We're going to head all the way up here. It's quite straightforward to artisan and then from artisan we want to be making our way back around here and then to this bridge over here so this is the route it is just one path so you can follow it quite straightforward it gets a bit more complicated when you get to lavincia town and you can kind of come through the mountain area here but this is where we want to be going zapapico is the area where we are and this is the final location so i'll speed this up and you can follow along pause the video and just do whatever to kind of help you get to this area. I 
think that's a shiny. It is another shiny that we've got here. This is madness. This is like the fourth, fourth shiny in this episode. <laughs> what is going on? There we go. Another shiny. Anyway, back on route. is the the kind of cave system where we want to go into where you will find Dino and Dino is a super rare spawn it's going to be difficult to catch but if you have a sandwich that boosts dragon encounters it's definitely recommended to put it on it is a scarlet exclusive as well so you're not going to be able to get this if you've got pokemon violet unfortunately but you want to just enter this cave system here and dino will be in this area so dino will be just spotted around in here and you you want to just make your way through it really and just hope that it does spawn i mean you can check your map to see if there's anything in here uh, at the minute, let's have a look. There's no Dino in there, but we can just kind of carry on through. And then once we're through this side, you're not going to be able to go down there if you're early game, but you can just make your way back through again and see if it does appear this time. Hopefully it pops up as we go through this area. Like I said, it's a very rare spawn. Hopefully we have, it. ah, there we go. A little bit better luck than we had with frizzy backs. And there's two of them there, so that's quite nice. And you'll be able to just encounter them and pick one up if you have Pokemon Scarlet. Keep in mind as well, if you've got a friend with Pokemon Scarlet and you've got Pokemon Violet, then you will be able to join them in their version of the game. And you will also be able to come and catch a Dino together, making sure that you've got the version exclusive Pokemon, which you haven't got in your game. And then they can do you the favor with getting you Bagon and then uh, Dreepy as well, which are the version exclusives for Violet. Okay, so that is all of the pseudo legendaries we're gonna cover that you can get at the early stages of your game. This is a good example to show you how you can get around the area without needing the different mechanics from your Coriodon or Mariodon by beating the Titan Pokemon. I hope you found this video useful. If you have, please drop a like, subscribe to the channel for more Pokemon Scarlet and Violet guides in the future. And I will see you very soon. So until then, friends, take care of yourselves and bye-bye.